Hello everybody, Jacob here. In this video, I'll show you Chorus Juno 6, our own Chorus effect based on the original Chorus that was embedded in the Juno 6 synthesizer. We'll explore its simple structure, hear how it sounds, as well as check out some cool ways on how to use it. Let's go! Chorus Juno 6 builds on the architecture of its hardware effect counterpart with detailed analysis and recreation of every component and setting right down to the rich sonic character of its BBD circuitry, offering a wide and thick sounding effect. Chorus Gen 6 takes this simple formula and also adds new functions by unfolding the modulation controls to create a manual mode, allowing you to shape and sculpt your own modulation settings in a fast and easy manner. This smart combination of the analog sound and our modern enhancements will make it a go-to tool whether you're a mixing engineer, a bandmate or a music producer. Let's check it out. Chorus Gen 6 offers a simple front panel structure. It starts off with the on-off switch, which activates or deactivates the plugin. Then there is a mono to stereo switch. Here in the mono mode, left and right channels are merged into the mono signal before being affected by the chorus. While in the stereo mode, both right and left channels are processed by the left and right delay lines, offering a full stereo processing. The lower area of the effect provides three different chorus modes, which are carefully emulated after the original unit, plus a few dedicated modulation controls, as well as the dry and wet mix ratio. The differences between these three modes come from variations in modulation rate and modulation shape. To begin with, let's listen to all of these three chorus modes on different types of sounds. We'll start with something smooth and lush. Ok, that was mode number 1, now let's listen to the same sound on the mode number 2. Ok, so these are the mode 1 and 2, and now let's listen to the mode 1 plus 2. Ok, that's pretty satisfying, it instantly makes the sound wider and thicker and much more pleasant. Now let's listen to all of these modes on a guitar.
Now let's listen to mode 2 on the same sound. And finally, mode 1 plus 2. Okay, now let's listen how these three modes will sound on the electronic and acoustic bass sounds. Okay, so that was the electronic bass, now let's listen how it will sound on a more of an acoustic sound. As you could hear, the differences between these three modes are very subtle yet noticeable, enhancing the sonic quality of the original dry signal. The mode 1 is slower and the mode number 2 has a bit faster modulation rate, while they both use the triangle waveform as the modulation shape. As you could notice, the 1 plus 2 mode is slightly different than the first two. It sounds more like a vibrato effect because it has a faster rate and it also uses a different type of waveform, which is the sine waveform in opposition to the triangle used by the first two. This is the original behavior that we have emulated based on the original hardware unit. Alright, so now let's check out the manual mode which allows us for a little bit more precision over the behavior of the unit. This section of the Chorus Gen 6 provides three controls that you can use to create your own Chorus modes and presets. They extend the original behavior of the unit, however you can also use them to recreate the modes 1 and 2. These are the rate, depth and phase controls. First off, the rate control defines the speed of the modulation. When set to lower values, it will create a slow chorus effect sounding like this. while the higher values will result in a more drastic sound such as this one. It is worth knowing that in the manual mode, the default modulation shape is the triangle one, just like in the modes one and two. Rate can be also synchronized with the master tempo. Its range goes from 8 bars up to 64 notes. By default, it is set to hertz.
The next one is the depth fader, which on the other hand defines how much of the modulation is applied to the dry signal. With it you can create some subtle tones by going for the lower values or a bit more dramatic effect by going fully up to the maximum. As you could hear with just the depth and rate knob you can create multiple type of chorus modes that will be great for your different type of sounds, samples and patterns. Last control in the manual mode is the phase which changes the LFO phase. This function will simply alter one of the modulated delay lines by inverting it, causing interesting variations across the whole stereo image. It's really subtle but does a very good job at bringing the little artifact up in the stereo image, thus enhancing the sound by giving it a bit of a more character. Alright, so now that we know the structure and the character of the unit, let's see how it can be used in a real life scenario. Alright, so this is the track done by the Solid Track guys, which utilizes a chorus on a few different tracks. Let's check it out. So this is that bass sound that we are talking about and this is how it sounds without the chorus on and now with the chorus on. Again, without the chorus and now with the chorus on. So now let's listen again with the other tracks. And another track that utilizes chorus in a nice way is the lead and arp type of sound. Without the chorus it sounds like this and now with the chorus it sounds a bit more differently. Without the chorus and now with the chorus again. And now let's listen with the other tracks again. Okay, that's it for the video. Hopefully you get a chance to see how wide and lush Chorus Gen 6 can get. Give it a try, give it a go and don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel. Thanks for watching and see you guys soon.